I'm no good at taking good advice And I'm self-careless, so don't tell me twice That lately I've been so stuck in my head That I forget just about everything my therapist said Maybe I'm self-helpless Maybe I'm self-helpless Maybe I'm self-helpless Maybe we are all self-helpless Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Self-Helpless Podcast. I'm Kelsey Cook. I'm Delaney Fisher. And today we're bringing you our top life hacks. I almost mm. just said top favorite life hacks. I was like, well, that's... <laughs> That's you the know. same. That's hey. this is how this episode is going to go for me mentally, just so everybody knows. I mean, life hack number one, say whatever you want, whatever you need to, you know, say it however you like. I told Chad as I was getting ready for this episode, I was having trouble coming up with some at first. And I was like, you know what? I want somebody to give me a fucking life hack. I'm losing my mind lately. We went to Cheesecake Factory and I didn't know that we were going to go. I thought we were just running errands. And so I wore my pajamas under my coat to the Cheesecake Factory. I just need everybody to know that's mentally where I'm at in my life is eating fucking spaghetti and meatballs with a pajama shirt on under my coat. And it's just that's that's where I'm at. That is, hey, no shame there. No shame at all. It actually reminds me, I actually wore my pajamas to my first support group meeting. <laughs> I don't know if I told you that, <laughs> but I, that's where I was at. And it was a room of, you know, 60 something people. But I tried, I wore a pajama top, but I wore like kind of normal looking pants, I guess. Right, yes. I got so many compliments <laughs> on my top and I said, it is PJ's. This is a pajama top. And um, people loved it. They just loved the pattern. They loved the vibe. I'm like, all right, you know what? I think this is going to go into my uh, regular shirt category now. It can be both. Oh. It's been confirmed. So that might be the case for your top too. Oh my God, that's so funny. You really met the perfect group of people for you, like enabling your insane fashion choices. I feel like today people listening when I said I wore my pajamas under my coat to Cheesecake Factory, I feel like people were like, oh, that sounds like Kelsey's voice, but that's <laughs> for sure what Delaney would do. Right. <laughs> we're just slowly morphing into one person. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've said it before. I feel like there's some days where the self-helpless podcast feels more like a self-help podcast and right. other days where it feels like a self-helpless, yes. like a, listen, I, I, again, would love life hacks from some other people right now, but I am excited about the list I have. It's oh, just, I, I can't yeah. wait to hear about your list. Um, you. Before we Yours get into too. it, where are you performing coming up? So, so many tour dates for next year, you guys. In January, I will be in Orlando and San Diego. In February, I will be in Tacoma, Philly, Red Bank, Stamford. And then in March, San Francisco, Chicago, Minneapolis. And then I'm taping my special uh, April 6th in Madison, Wisconsin. And nice. so excited. And then it'll be Sacramento, Salt Lake City, Vegas, Denver, Kansas City, Baltimore area. So that's the first half of next year. And uh, yeah, please go to KelseyCook.com and get some tickets. How about you, Del? Oh, fabulous. I got to have to send uh, some of uh, Cam's buddies out to your special. A lot of uh, Wisconsiners yes, out there. Yes, please. Um, Awesome. Um, I have another podcast. It's called Career Crush. It's totally free. It's a private show, but there's no fear or anything. It's at my website, DelaneyFisher.com. And we're just talking about creativity in work and in life and finding the sweet spot in whatever it is that you do or want to do or how you want to contribute. And I am just loving all the interviews that I'm having over there. Um, yeah, I'm just like, it's just great talking to people who do things that I've always been interested in. I get so yeah. much out of it. <laughs> I'm hearing, you know, the the listeners get a lot out of it, too. And um, I just I like bridging that gap. Like when I feel like I have a lot of questions about a topic, it's so nice to just have, you know, a, an hour conversation with somebody who can give so much insight and perspective on what it's like to do that job or live that lifestyle. And just, you know, those little little nuggets of wisdom that you can kind of plug into your own life. Yeah. Um, yeah, just very, I I'm loving it. So I'd love to have you over there if it sounds like something that you're interested in. Again, it's at my website, 
DelaneyFisher.com. Uh, I also like to share about like media and career opportunities, and um, we do like special events sometimes and all that. So we're doing like a virtual art gallery for the holidays this season, promoting all the different artists in my uh, in that space over there. So yeah, oh, that's it's awesome. just a, it's just a fun, creative, weird virtual playground. I don't know. It's not one yeah. thing. It's many things, and I fucking love that. You know, yeah. wear your pajamas, everybody. Wear it's your fine. pajamas. I mean, do yeah, exactly. Do whatever you want to do. So many of you know, I try to put myself in a box for so long, and the, the mm. box is fucking exploded. Okay, <laughs> there's shit everywhere. <laughs> it's a mess. And I am the enjoying it. The feral cat that way. is on the loose. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm not putting anything in a box ever again. Yeah. Unless it's unless it's when I'm decluttering. Yes. Um, then boxes are needed. But yes. Anyway. That's it. I love it. So our quotable today comes from one of our helpsters, Amelia. It says, doubt is one of the names of intelligence. Mm. Oh, this is from George Louis Borgs? Borges? Or is it Jorge Luis Borges? Borges. You know, Delaney, it probably <laughs> is. But I it's live one in of Minnesota those. and I have <laughs> never been whiter in my entire life. So... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go with your <laughs> pronunciation. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's oh, yeah. that's Kelsey's new favorite term. Oh, oh the, yeah. Oh yeah. Go on the pontoon. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. It's so. I've been saying "ope" so much lately without oh. even realizing it. I'm like, God. It just it sunk in. It just oh, happened so even, quickly. I haven't even heard of "ope." Is that like a combination of "oh no" and "nope" or what? It's like uh, like if you're accidentally in somebody's way, you're like "oh, oh, excuse me, <laughs> oh, sorry." Oh, didn't see you there. <laughs> oh, Who am I? What what has become of my life? Oh, I can't wait to see, like, to have a conversation with you in, like, five years when it's really sunk into your bones and the kind of shit that's going to come out of your mouth. That's going to be a that's gonna yeah. be a good time for everybody around you in your life. It's going to be crazy. I mean, yeah, who yeah. knows? Who knows yeah. where this accent is going to go in five years? It's, it's already this bad and I haven't even been here a year, so... <laughs> Um, so yeah, yes. well, back to the quote. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, back to the oh, quote. Oh, back to the quote. <laughs> Doubt is one of the names of intelligence. I've never heard this before. Yeah, I haven't either. I mean, I, I suppose that's true. Yeah. Well, I don't know if there, I don't know if this is just something I've heard in like discussions with people like on podcasts or if mm-hmm. there's another quote of like, you know, some of the most, um, brilliant people or you know unique people are you know some of the people that are filled with like the most doubt and self-doubt it's almost like the more doubt you have about something it's like the more you should probably put it out there in a way or yeah you know bring it to life because I feel like self-doubt could be the fact that it's maybe different than everything around you or you haven't seen it before or you don't you think it's maybe too weird and that's probably why the world needs it the most is because maybe it is different maybe it is a new idea maybe it is a new weird thing and you're the one to bring that to life or something that's just my two cents I truly have no idea what this this author meant by that quote I like it I like that I think that's a good interpretation I think the word doubt just threw me yeah but if I think if you think of it also as self-reflection like people who are kind of turning inward and being like, okay, what's what's going on? I feel like those are intelligent people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because I'm like, I feel like in the times where I felt the most com- confident in myself, yeah. I knew the least about that thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's almost like, yeah. oh, the more I learn about something, the more like maybe doubt I actually have about Yes. Should I do this? Should I be the one to do this? There's a lot already out there about this thing. I, you know, it's like, but when you, for me, I'm just talking about from my perspective, in times where I feel like I I didn't know much about that topic or that thing, I was like, fucking, I can do this. Let's go. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's just a weird, yeah. weird dynamic. Well, I think imposter syndrome sometimes doesn't set in until you have some success. Yeah. And that's when you start to be like, oh, shit, should I have this? Did I earn this? Am I good enough for this? But when you're starting, it's like you might not have success yet. You're so, so you're just wildly confident for no reason. Right. And then it's like there's something to lose kind of when you have found mm. some success. And you're like, oh, if I do this, will I will everything disappear? Yeah. Oof. What a oh, our minds. Yeah. What what fun blobs. Um, well, yeah. Amelia, thank you so much for 
submitting that. Uh, if you would like to be able to submit quotes or um, pick the the show's topics, you can become a patron. You can join uh, patreon.com slash selfhelpless. So many fun things to do over there. Yeah, you can also submit uh, shout outs that get on the show and rec- hot recommendations like your favorite life hacks we'll read on the show. That's just oh, yeah. a good time. So, oh, oh, yeah. Damn it. Oh, that was such a bad oh, one. Here we go. That was <laughs> such a bad one. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. Ugh, oh, Kels, I feel like you should start your hack list because maybe there's going to be something real Minnesotan on there. <laughs> How to call what would, what, how to call a woodpecker company when it eats your house? Oh my god! This so Delaney and Taylor came to visit me, which I don't even think have we talked about yet as a segment. I feel like we did, but I okay. can't remember. I, I can't don't remember know. either, guys. <laughs> help! Um, but when Taylor and Delaney came, we had been in the process of having a whole on the side of our house repaired because goddamn woodpecker this is where i live now fucking woodpeckers come yeah. just drill a hole in the house you bought and so yeah. we've got like all sorts of like reflective tape out there now to keep them away <laughs> it's just a whole thing like this is this is truly your mid-30s is <laughs> getting quotes for woodpecker repair what the fuck am i doing when you became a homeowner homeowner you really went for it you it's, went yeah. all in on homeowner duties and oh tasks God. and to do lists. Yes, full, yeah, full in. I, it's I immediate. I'm in shock that like my hair didn't cut itself into like a very short bob and like have a <laughs> minivan in front of my house immediately. Like I do feel very like a Midwest mom, yeah. even though I don't have kids. But it's just being a homeowner. Yeah, it's it's a whole thing now. But, but yeah. I fucking love it. I love this house so much. <laughs> Um, okay. Should we start with some life hacks? Let's do it. What do you got? So, um, I have a few different categories. I've got like beauty hacks. I've got travel hacks. I've got pet hacks, stuff like that. So, um, I I will start with my travel hacks Great. and this, this is a, you can do this anywhere. It doesn't have to be traveling, but I find that when you're on a trip, especially a, a vacation with friends, you want to maybe blast some music. And, uh, sometimes your iPhone doesn't do the trick. Sometimes you don't have a Bluetooth speaker with you, but if you take a bowl and put your phone in it, it will amplify the sound coming out of it. Have you ever done that? Yes. I do it with, uh, cups. Oh, yes. Like cups. tall glasses. Mm-hmm, that works too. Yes. So anyway, yeah, that's like one of my favorite things. Ever since uh, I figured that out, I do that shit all the time. I love it. I love it. Such a good one. And you can do it anywhere. That's what's so great. Thank you. And it can yeah. be outdoors, indoors. I mean, yeah. wherever you're at. So travel hacks made me think of one of your fav- favorite travel hacks that you've given me, which is to put a phone charger in your either suitcase or overnight bag i keep a phone charger in every bag all my overnight bags now and i love it and i did this i when we first moved into our current place we were moving into a a much bigger area and so i did that with my home that i forgot i i forgot to mention the podcast i bought phone chargers and put them uh put one in every room of our home because they kept disappearing and moving from one area to the next and there was just more nooks and crannies to plug it in so now in every room and like every kind of nook and corner we have one you know whether it's in a drawer or a basket or whatever it just makes things so much more convenient yeah I mean some of them are expensive but you can get some kind of cheaper ones and it just there's nothing worse than feeling stranded with a a low phone battery it can be such an anxiety inducing situation yes absolutely so that made me think of your your travel hack I love that. Well, that's funny because that kind of piggybacks onto um, my next one I was going to say, which was to buy two of everything if you're able to. And this is, I think this is more geared toward people who travel frequently. But for me, it is really exhausting to, on a weekly basis, like pack things, get home, take them back out a few days later, put everything back in. And so I just finally was like, you know what? I will use these up eventually, like with skincare products, um, toiletries, Mm -hmm. anything that you can afford to have two of that makes your life easier. In my mind, it's worth the money because like you will go, like you would be buying a second one of it anyway, once you round it up the first one. So you might as well just buy two and then use them both at half the rate without having to move them back and forth. 
Yeah, that to- duplicates totally makes sense, yeah. especially for your lifestyle, like hairbrushes, makeup, toiletries, like all that yeah. shit. Yes, a hairbrush Definitely. is a great one. Yeah, toothpaste, deodorant, all that shit. It's like just have a travel version of as many things as you can, and then it it does cut out a lot of time. That's great. Yes, um, a styling one I kind of have is I don't know if you do this, Kels, but this is a this is a hack I've been using for a while now. Um, when I tuck, I, I do a lot of like, um, tucked in shirts with high-waisted jeans now mm-hmm. is my look these days. Yes, and I will too. actually tuck my shirt into my underwear inside oh. of my pants because it keeps it still. It, it kind of looks like a body. It looks like my shirt is now a bodysuit, and it stays put oh. because if I don't do that, it kind of hunches up, you know, kind of rises up as the day goes. Right. But if I tuck it into my panties, it Girl. stays there. That's and so it's smart. pretty solid. So that's my um, DIY bodysuit hack. Shit. Fashion yeah. tips coming from pajama lady. <laughs> I know. And they're actually good. Who knew? <laughs> I feel like, hey, try it and let me know um, how, you, how you feel about it. But it's like, yeah, it's pretty great. I love Same. that. I, w- I really will try that because yeah. I don't, I'm not a fan of um, how a bodysuit feels. I love how they look. Same. Yes. But I hate the like, it's like, feels like you're wearing two pairs of underwear. Yes. The snaps are riding all around back. It's just like not a, this isn't anything we're used to. This doesn't no. feel normal. It's all bunchy. I don't like it. So I have actually yeah. been cutting, I'll buy a bodysuit and I will cut the, um, the pieces of cloth that snap down there. And so I just like, I just do a little tuck. Okay. So, and you tuck it into your unders, underwear or no? I don't tuck it into my underwear. I'm going to okay. try to hack though, but I just okay. tuck it into my jeans. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Try my um, little panties. Let me see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely will. I really will. <laughs> so, okay. This is, um, this is my one pet life hack. This is for cat owners. And I did not know this until, I don't know, a little while into having my cats. And it was really a game changer. When you are clipping their claws, it goes so much easier more easily if you wrap them in a towel or blanket like if you Mm. swaddle them like a little baby and then pull one paw out at a time and like tuck it back in once it's done oh my god it makes it's like putting a weighted blanket on you when you're having anxiety I mean my cats don't like getting their claws clipped and so they don't they don't wiggle around they don't like try to scratch you uh if you haven't tried that it makes a huge difference oh yes love it such a good one um my dogs are so insane that they don't let us clip their nails, so we have to take them to a doggy nail salon. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I have definitely tried. I have tried uh, everything that I could do at home, and they just, they're so anti me touching their paws. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been rough. But yeah. um, I, I, I also have a, a little pet hack. Okay, so I don't know if you get like this now that you're a dog mom, Kels, but the poop bags that you take on walks <sighs> with, your, with your dogs. I can never fucking open them. They are infuriating. Can somebody please make a poop bag that's easy to open? And so I will be sitting there for minutes trying to open this thing. I'll be licking my fingers. I'll be spitting on it. I'll be open. All right. So now (laughs) I just pre-open my bags before I go on a walk. So I will get all my bags out. I will open. I will actually wet my fingers under the sink and I will open and all the bags, air them out, put them in my pocket or I I keep a little um, fanny pack. I wear a fanny pack when I walk my dogs. I'll put them in there. So when they take a shit, all I got to do is just pull it out. It's ready to go. You scoop it. You're done. There's no fighting with the poop bag in the middle of the street in front of your neighbors. So I don't know. Do you have you experienced this now? Yes. Okay. And I. Do the same thing as you now. Oh my gosh, quite, how funny. <laughs> especially in Minnesota winters, you're in, I'm wearing like giant mittens. Token, oh. And so then you would poop and there, I mean, there's no shot. Then you're taking mittens off. Your hands are freezing. It is the word, you know, why have they not fixed that? I say that to myself every time. Like how, is there somebody who's figured this out and I just don't know about the product or have they not figured this out yet? It's crazy. It's, uh, Yeah. I feel your pain completely. I get um, full of rage thinking about by the end of the year how many minutes I have spent trying to open poop bags every day. Yes. And it's, yeah, it's it's too much. So, You know what really pisses me off is I have pretty sweaty hands naturally, 
But anytime I go to open a poop bag, all of a sudden my hands aren't sweaty enough to open them. I'm like, I'm sorry. Why is this? What is this like hyperhidrosis thing that I got not working when I need it to? Only when I don't want, only when I don't want it to be sweaty, when I'm like shaking somebody's hand, then it's, then it's all over the place. But when I need it, when it could be useful, it's like, bye, bitch. Dry as paper. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you. It's, yeah, it's crazy. (laughs) Um, this is a, I've got a few kitchen ones. So Mm. I have started to use my paper grocery bags as my recycling bin Mm -hmm. in my kitchen. And so that way, I mean, such a small thing, but it's just like, it cuts out that middle step of having to like dump a bin or do a garbage line or anything like that. It's just when the, um, paper bag is full you just grab the handles and go set it in the recycling bin and it's just very streamlined it's like you get to just throw away your entire recycling bin every time yes I love that I love that it's so funny can't Cam and I have never had enough room in any kitchen we've lived in together to actually have a trash can. There's never been room for a oh full size trash can. So we have we have had Fucking to use. LA. Yeah, I know. Right. So we've had to that. use exactly like the Trader Joe's paper bags or um, just tiny little baskets where we have tiny little bags in it. But I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm so looking forward to at some point being able to fit a trash can in my kitchen. I mean, yeah. I'm not asking for much. people. <laughs> Living in Los Angeles truly reduces you to feeling like a fucking feral animal. Where you're like, I didn't realize that my needs were so um, unreasonable. Right. But that's right. How, that's what LA makes you feel like. I mean, right. it's right. It's it's nuts. absolutely nuts. Yeah, um, LA but to go York. with yes, to go with your kitchen thing, I've um, one thing that I do that's like kind of I don't know kitchen adjacent is. I try to think of what I can do for my future self in a like a daily future self thing. So what I have started doing, I have a little um, kind of like protein drink, vitamin drink every day. And I don't know why, but in the morning, it just feels like so much to do to like go to my kitchen, get the cup, put the put the powder in, blah, blah, blah. So I just oh, a bit before I go to bed, I will grab my little bottle and put the uh the what do you call it the scoop in there and then just keep it in the fridge for myself so that way all to do i open it i put the water in i'm ready to drink i shake it and i drink it versus all those other little steps that sometimes you just don't feel like doing in the morning for yourself it's kind of just setting my morning routine up to be a little bit more just be more easy um i love that and i don't know i just i do that for myself as when i can think about it i don't do it every day but when i think about it and i'm really on my a game I love that. We've talked before on here about how sometimes there's this pressure to have like this cookie cutter morning routine, this yes. Instagrammable oh. morning routine. and Barf. But yeah, you have yeah. to just, I think, figure out like what is going to be the most efficient for you. If you have more energy at night, then yes. yeah, fuck it. Put the, put the scoop of powder in there then. Exactly. It's like picking your clothes out the night before. You know, it's like, what can I just do yeah. the night before? I'm already walking around. Let yeah. me just do it because when I right right when I wake up, I don't. I'm not going to feel like doing a bazillion different things. My brain is still waking up. Yeah, I think I yes. struggle more on days where it feels like I didn't get a lot of momentum in the morning because like one thing took longer than it should have. Yeah, and then the whole yeah. day you kind of feel behind and there's an anxiety. So it's like. Yeah, if you can just like knock off a few things early on yes. and help yourself the night before get ready for it, then great. It's like those micro tasks that really add up oh, and yes. become very draining and tedious without you realizing it. It's like, ugh. Can yes. I just bla- blast some music and just get this shit done for my tomorrow self? Yes. I was um, I was looking online about executive function stuff with ADHD and mm. um, been looking at so many things lately that's like for females, like is it female ADHD or is it depression? Like, mm. you know, so many of those things can look similar. And uh, I was reading, I think it was on Reddit maybe, but like several people, their experiences with executive function issues are like just feeling an inability to do a task that to other people might seem like very easy to do Mm. and somebody described it as if it can't be done in an instant then I have a hard time doing it 
And I was like, oh. oh, I felt so seen because there are so many things throughout my day that it's like, is this really like that hard to do? No, but I can't do it in an instant and that bothers me. And then it beca- it feels very daunting to me. Oh, that's interesting. Has that always been the case for you? Or do you feel like that's more of a recent thing or like an adulthood thing? It has been um, much more prevalent the past few years. So you and I were, we were actually talking before the show started about just like how I think a lot of the the trauma with um, the mom stuff and just 2020 and uh, it's just a lot of things that happened in my life uh, in this kind of short period of time. I feel like it really changed the chemicals in my brain. I feel like my brain is very different now than it was pre-2020 and uh, I don't remember things being quite so difficult before and so yeah it's you know I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, I've taken some steps to hopefully figure this out and, and have life feel a little bit easier but yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember things feeling so daunting interesting yeah well it makes sense lots a lot's gone on the last few years for sure yeah, yeah. um Another thing that goes along with your trash bag thing, I have a never ending good like donation bag in my home. Maybe yes. this is helpful. Um, I think this was the minimalists have shared this a lot of, you know, kind of like minimalism people. Um, but I just I love that because it's like the, the things that maybe you feel like ha- have not had a place all of a sudden have a place where like, you know, yes. I'm either keeping it or I'm donating it. And I'm not going to donate it to like tomorrow, but I'm going to donate it when this bag is full, like in a month or something. And yes. I just like when things have like their little categories and places. Um, and then I have an, another separate bag now of like, maybe I get something gifted or I get like a lot mm-hmm. of something. Um, like people love gifting me like all kinds of bath things, which I fucking love. Mm -hmm. Um, but I got like 750 bath bombs (laughs) one year for Christmas. I got so many. Right. And so now I have another bag where it's like, um, keeping this for re-gifting because there's just a lot of duplicates or whatever. And then I always have like cute little gifts on hand, you know, for my friends or family or just like little things come up. So those are like the two never ending bags I now have in my home that I feel like are, I use very frequently. That's so smart. The the gifting idea. Yeah, I um, we have one here for the clothes that we want to donate. And yeah. to add on to that, I know we've mentioned this in previous episodes about minimalism and decluttering. But if you're somebody who has a hard time letting go of things or kind of like being on the fence, I had started to keep clothes in the trunk of my car. Right. And then... If a few months went by and I realized that like I couldn't even remember what was in that bag, then you know like it's not something that's very significant to you. You can probably part with it and be okay emotionally. So that's another good one too. If like if you're somebody who struggles with it, just put it in purgatory. It's like yes, give give yourself a a little time if you are somebody that's afraid of just like an immediate declutter. Absolutely, clothing limbo. I love it. Nothing better. Yes. I love it. This is a this is a random kitchen one and other people might do this. This might be super basic for people, but I recently started using so I eat avocado almost every day on my sandwich and I have started to use the other half of the shell as the Ziploc bag. Oh, we just like put it that's on, how on. I keep it from oxidizing and getting brown on the outside is instead of yeah. using a Ziploc bag that I don't need to, I just use the shell that's like maybe hollowed out now. If I like scooped one half of it out, I just like put it back on like a little, yeah. like a little hat. Yes. <laughs> and it, it works. It's been working great. Oh, I love it. And very yeah. eco-friendly of you. I much Thank you. I this. thought you'd be proud. <laughs> Little avocado hat. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you'd so be proud. So cute. Um, this is more of just like a life one, uh, just general. We've talked about like the worry appointment thing on here so many times, but it really is just such a great hack that I that I really come back to. But years ago, my therapist shared like, make a little worry appointment. Uh, like when you find yourself kind of spiraling or being anxious about something, put a worry appointment in your calendar. It could be like every day at 3 p.m. or once a week at 2 p.m., whatever. And if you do that, it's just kind of like this weird little mind fuck where you are like, oh, I can worry about this 
later on my worry appointment. And then like sometimes when you get to your worry appointment where you're allowed to just sit there for 10 to 15 minutes and worry and spiral about everything, you often feel like you don't need the appointment. Mm -hmm. So it kind of trains your brain to like, oh, I can worry about that later. And then you don't end up needing to. And I, uh, yeah. I've just really loved that, um, that, that whole concept of like making time for something, scheduling time, uh, and either doing it because you need it, like following through on that, or using it as kind of a trick for your brain. Yeah, I think that's so interesting on a like a neurochemical level on making yes. like new neural pathways. Yes, because you're training your brain to not give in to that immediate worry and go down that spiral it's like you're yes. creating a new groove in your brain of like actually we're going to do this instead we'll do this later and then like you said turns out sometimes then you don't even have to do it at all love it I mean I cannot really count the times that I've actually sat down and had my worry appointment right I, I, I really don't think I've used that much I'm like okay setting my alarm for 15 minutes let's spiral about my entire life and all of my choices yeah. I just don't yeah. think I really done that much yeah yeah so yeah it's helpful so if you know my stand-up then you would probably already know this hack but um despite having more money now than I did when I was in college um having an actual dishwasher in my home <laughs> I still continue <laughs> to if I'm putting slices of banana on cereal or oatmeal I still just tear it off. I tear off chunks with my teeth and I just do a gentle <laughs> pop, just drop it with my mouth onto my... Listen, I, I really feel like those years of college or living in uh, the valley without a dishwasher, it's like you, mm. you yeah. just don't want to create more dishes than necessary. Because you're going to have to wash them by hand if you don't have a dishwasher. And mm. so I just started doing that and I can't stop. You know, I just... Yeah, it's going to take some time to retrain that fucking neural pathway in your head, I think. You know what I mean? It's like, listen, Kels, listen, you got a woodpecker guy, you can use a goddamn knife, okay? You have the space to use a knife and put it in your 12, one of 12 dishwashers you have. You got it. You got this guy. I know, the lady came over and I was, I was showing her and Taylor that this the house we bought, it's like... There's like some fancy things like that my white trash ass didn't even know existed where like they make dishwashers now that look like drawers in your kitchen. They just look like they're part of the cabinets. And right. so our dishwasher is actually like two drawers stacked on top of each other. Um, and when I told, I told Delaney and Taylor that when they were showing us the house on the house tour, I was like, oh, well, guys... I mean, it's a beautiful house, but I, I can't buy a house that doesn't have a dishwasher. And they just looked at me like I was such a child. They're like, oh, you don't have nice things. <laughs> you don't understand how this works. So, yeah, I've, I've learned some things. Yeah. It's living here. But yeah, yeah you're, I mean, you're right. I, sh I should just slice it up with a knife. But it's At just least with the spoon that you are using for your cereal. Like you take the spoon, you unpeel the banana, drop the banana in your cereal, and then spoon it up into chunks. I know. That's what I do. Nothing's faster than my teeth. Oh, gosh. You know, <laughs> you, know you, be so you belong in Minnesota. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know what's I'm so kidding. funny? Do you know how, how rare it is on this show? To elicit that sort of response from you toward me, <laughs> a very limited it's only, amount. It's only happened one time, and that was ten seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was like, "Whoa!" I don't think I've ever heard her make that sound toward me. Look at me like that. We used to be like somebody could compile just a jump cut of every time on the show where I've gone, "Oh, Delaney," yeah, just in horror. And shock at something you've done. And that was very fun. Oh, my God. I love it. I feel so alive. I feel oh so gosh. free. Oh, yeah. I I just feel like, I don't know. There's just, even though it's your own spit that you are using, like yeah. you're, you're mouthing it yourself and you're going to yeah. be the one eating it, still seems gross to me. It, I mean, yeah, it's, it is Like gross. nobody else is going to be eating it, but like just the... Just, yeah. How about you only put it in your mouth one time? That's a new rule for you going forward. <laughs> it just goes in once. 
<sighs> and that's yeah, it. I'm, I mama bird myself. Yeah, it's but just... I, I will say it's like they're not. It, it's not like covered in slobber. I'm not like a Great Dane or something. Like it's I like bite a tear it off with my teeth and then it's like dropped in. There's like no, not like a lot of saliva going on. You know, dogs' mouths are cleaner than humans, so you know maybe. You know, great. I would prefer a Great Dane slobber, <laughs> and then you eat the bowl of cereal. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's just you got some stuff to work on. You know, spoon, I'll I'll settle for a, a knife or a spoon, okay. and the spoon that you're actually using for your cereal, because then you are not using extra dishes. I know. And you use a spoon for your cereal. You're not slurping it up, right? Without no, silverware, it, it's like very. It's like not very like pleasing to me (laughs) in like a tactile way (laughs) to like use the spoon because it makes it all like scooped weird and then like I also don't like with a spoon or a knife that like the edge is pushing up against your finger I sound like I have some serious Uh, issues right now wow (laughs) wow I'm learning so much about you just from this one scenario I'm losing my mind Um, maybe you need to start wearing a glove (laughs) no this is what I mean this is all right you're adding I'm just gonna tear it off with my teeth can you maybe make a video for me the next time you do this to yourself or share it online if you yeah. like? Sure. I would like to see your process and I'd like to hear about what's going on through your head. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, great. That would I be stopped great. microwaving my water for you. I have an actual tea kettle oh. now. I have, I have changed my ways for you. That's awesome. I love that. That's very <laughs> nice. Um, one big thing for me, uh, these are just a couple little hacks, I guess, at once is... I really like the look of the TVs that look like they're a picture frame. And I've shared this before, Mm -hmm. but they are very expensive. So I literally bought duct tape that looks like wood. And then I duct tape my, the frame of my TV. I love it. People love it. Get so many compliments on it. I was like, it was $4. It's pretty great. You should get some. It looks so good. I I love it. never know. Right? So it's like, look, that's a fun little hack. Just like little design hacks like that. I've put like hanging kind of macrame pieces over my wall unit, um, air conditioning units, because those are such eyesores. Mm -hmm. Especially like if you live in a little place, like places like LA, it's going to be a small area. Those things can just be such big eyesores in your yeah. environment any way that you can like hide something with a potted plant or put a macrame or put some fucking duct tape that looks like wood i'm all for that those little simple very affordable yeah. design hacks have really made such a big difference in how i feel in a very you know small space fuck yeah that's awesome <sighs> i love that life hack of yours um i have one more thing about bananas but i promise it's not oh, anything gosh. savage <laughs> So I, I tend to have a smoothie every morning and for a while, and this, again, this might be a completely duh thing for a lot of people, but for a while I was buying sliced bananas from the store, like frozen bags of sliced bananas. Oh, I didn't even, okay. It makes sense that they sell those. I didn't even think that they would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're, they have like combo packs where it's like strawberries like and sliced bananas. And shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. And I was just like spending so much fucking money on on banana slices that were frozen or whatever and it's i just now again probably everybody already does this but to me i was like oh i can just buy a bunch of bananas for like a dollar and 10 cents and freeze them so um right i feel a little embarrassed that i even shared that because i can (laughs) feel from you that you're like wow okay I thought you were going to say, I can save money by just slicing them with my teeth. (laughs) And then I've saved $17 a month (laughs) by munching them up and put them in my freezer. So I'm glad that you went that direction with this. This is, yeah, we're making progress already. There's a lot going on. We're making Um, progress. Um, Okay. My last couple here. Um, These are, these are more just like, Okay. Using pencil instead of pen on your uh, planner. I just love it so much. I used to use pen and then I would erase things and change things around. And then my calendar looked so chaotic. And I look at my calendar many times throughout the day. And to see just like a, you know, a kind of clear 
you know, space and things that are, you know, movable has released so much stress and anxiety. And it was, it's one of our listeners who gave us that tip so yeah. long ago. And I wish I could, I wish I've looked for the email where they sent that oh. in so I could actually address that person, but you know who you are and I love you so much. Thank you for that hot <laughs> tip. And another kind of planning hack is I just automate everything. I automate things on my digital calendar for like standing appointments or people's birthdays or um, putting uh, money into my savings like transactions I like setting something up one time and then not thinking about it anymore and I just anything that I can automate um, in my life has just been uh, huge amazing yeah um, my last few that I have have to do with beauty things so um, if you are somebody who feels like when they get out of the shower they have a hard time brushing their hair like it's tangled Mm, um, yes. or you deal with like damaged hair, split ends, I will use conditioner in the shower the normal way, you know, put it on, let it sit, and then I will rinse it off. But then um, before I get out of the shower, I will take a tiny, tiny bit, like really such a small amount, and I will just like comb it through the very ends of my hair. I don't want it to get up all the way toward my roots and feel greasy at all, mm. but it just helps so much to when you get out and you're brushing it, and then it's like a little bit of a leave-in treatment too. Oh, I see. So you actually put a little conditioner at the very bottom? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, the very ends of my hair. Be- and you don't rinse it? No. Okay, gotcha. Ah, yeah. It just helps like protect nice. the hair a little bit. It's kind of like, yeah. I think it's a, a good protection product without having to buy a whole separate thing. Yes. Um, so I like doing that. In that same vein of not needing to buy more products than you need, if you're somebody who likes a really sheer foundation or like a bb cream or tinted uh, moisturizer i've just been making my own lately because i really like the sunscreen i have but it's just like white sunscreen yeah and i also really like my foundation but on days where i don't want like a full face of makeup but i just want a little tiny something just mix a little bit of your foundation into your sunscreen and it's instantly a tinted moisturizer nice or tinted sunscreen yeah um Love if that. you are somebody who really dreads taking your eye makeup off at the end of the night, especially like hard to get off mascara, I just have found that tubing mascara in the past couple of years has really changed my life. If you don't know what tubing mascara is, it goes onto your eyelashes differently than a regular mascara and it kind of like almost creates uh, like a spaghetti, like a hollowed out spaghetti noodle around your eyelash. And to get mm. tubing mascara off, you just get your eyelashes wet. And then it just like comes, it comes off in the full like In tube. a tube? Yep. Like there's like little, what? like, it looks like black spider legs on your face. What? Mm-hmm. How? Yep. And oh, so those are also okay. really great for like smudging or flake because they like can't. Because like they don't really like react to oil. It just comes off the water. So, wow. um, yeah, I really like tubing mascara too. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, and then this is, uh, I don't know, this is not the most eco-conscious, I will say this, but if you are acne prone, I have started to buy, I believe it's called the Clean, Clean Skin Club is the brand on Amazon. Um, they sell disposable face towels that are like just, it, it's like a, it's like a paper towel, basically. I mean, I'm sure you could just yeah. use a paper towel, but it's like made of a little bit nicer, softer material that's good for your skin. I have found that um, before I had bought that, I would use a washcloth on my face. Um, I would try to use it maybe like two or three times before putting it in the hamper, but like you are technically kind of spreading bacteria around. Um, but if you use one every single time you wash your face, then that's a lot of laundry as well. So I've just been using these. They're great to like wipe the counter off after you're done washing your face. And that's just been a nice change in my life. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So those Fabulous. are my life hacks. Fabulous. I love we it. Gosh, it. there's so many. Oh my God. You could have a, uh, we could have a hack episode for every category of our life. Oh, we really there's could. so many yes. good ones. Um, well, what do you got uh, segment wise? Yes. So I have been watching a couple shows on Netflix that uh, I really like and just wanted to recommend. They're very, very different. So I finished the Netflix documentary called Quarterback, which follows three of the uh, current NFL quarterbacks. And if you're somebody who loves sports 
uh, it, it just is so fascinating as somebody who obviously did not, I, I didn't grow up playing football. I don't know that much about it. I didn't understand a lot of the behind the scenes of what it takes to be a quarterback. And uh, it's just interesting to see their lives outside of football. And anyway, if you're a sports person, it was very well done. It was very interesting. And then Chad and I have been watching, I believe it's called Life on Our Planet. It's mm. new. It came out. Morgan Freeman is doing the the narration and it is fucking fascinating. Mm. I mean, you feel like you're on an edible watching it because it's like they've recreated what all the dinosaurs would have looked like. Oh, fascinating. It's You're seeing things that you can't even imagine they ever existed. It's so wild. So it's kind of like walking you through the evolution of, wow. of like creatures and life on our planet and how things came to be. And it's, it's so good. It's so interesting. Oh, fabulous. I'm going to watch that. Yeah. That like a really yeah. good one. Yeah. Um, I don't really have... Yeah, I didn't really have anything sticking out, but I found some bonus hacks. So I'm just going <laughs> to just oh, gonna share those. Great. So actually, my friend Sandy gave me this hack recently. She um, she was is decorating an apartment and she found out that. Um, OK, so, you know, like cute little shelves that go on a, on the wall, right? Like yeah. just like the little the little like standalone shelves. She's like, if you actually get stairs if you go to the your home improvement store and you actually buy wood that's meant for like a stair topper it's so much cheaper than buying the wood oh. as a shelf so you get the stair wood you have them cut it there for you and then you go home and you save a lot of money because Whoa. shelves are so expensive hot tip there great really tip. great little design hack there um and then i wanted to say a few more things i um i find that like wearing a cute workout outfit or just even cute PJs or just feeling a little cute it, it translates into me taking better care of myself I yes. will I will move my body more I find myself eating more mindfully uh, I, I tend to kind of have a lot of emotional overeating habits I don't do that as much like when I feel like I look cute and it makes me feel good it makes me want to do things that are great for my body so I I've really noticed how just you know taking a few extra minutes to like wear a little matching outfit or put something cute on instead of just saying staying in something like gross all day yeah I'm really trying to do that more often for myself um yeah and then anymore. and then um I also like to take little like you know room spray and I like to uh put my fan on in my room and then spray the fan so the spray <laughs> like it yeah. goes all over the room <laughs> I, I feel it. like that's just like, you know, it's that way you're not spraying every corner. You just kind of get it all done in one fell swoop. Um, yes. And then what I found out recently, I, I make a lot of art at home and I like to thrift different canvases and I'll paint over canvas and all that. I found a thrift shop recently that also sells paint. So now all of my materials that I make are going to be repurposed and thrifted all of my art things my supplies my, and I love that because you know I'm a I like the eco-friendly stuff um mm. so that's a hot tip that I just didn't know existed that people are actually reselling paint that they don't need anymore love that that's um great. and um you know how we've said like if it's not a hell yes it's a no yeah. um I think I shared this last episode too but I've been really trying to uh, ask myself like is this a 10 for you is this like a 10 out of 10 mm. you want to do it it feels good or whatever um and that's been helping me a little bit more than if it's not a hell yes it's a no because mm. I can actually put a number to it where it's like you know it's like oh it could be a hell yes or uh, I don't know yeah. but I don't know just oh it's a 7 out of 10 I'm not gonna do it today or whatever I don't know why that's been helping me as just like a mindset hack, but it has. Um, mm. And then my last one that I have found here is I, if you are somebody who has a lot of interests and likes to do a lot of different things, and maybe even you switch careers frequently, um, as I've done, I am really trying to, as soon as I catch myself kind of beating myself up for it, like, why can't you just pick a thing and stay with a thing forever, whatever. Um, I will just immediately ask myself, what would I say to a little kid right now? Like, would I be rude to a little kid who outgrew playing with Barbies every day? It's like, you got to play with Barbies every day for the rest of your life. You picked one thing and you got to, you know, right. I, I'm like, I would never. What? That's so ridiculous. Like, so I'm just I've been shifting that a lot 
because I tend to, that's my default for a long time is just beating myself up for changing my mind or growing in a different direction. And uh, that has been really helping when you can just be like, okay, what if it's a little kid who doesn't want to play t-ball yeah. anymore and they want to play uh, basketball instead? You're going to friggin' scream at them about it? It's ridiculous. Yeah, of course not. So yeah. Stupid. That's, that's a great one. So just mindset stuff is helpful. Yes. Yeah. That's oh, my, man. That's well, my good shit. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got an iTunes review of the episode. Yes. This is from um, Mocha Mona 2846 They say, love the podcast. Brings me so much comfort. I've been listening to the podcast for a while now. And Kelsey and Delaney have been such great role models for me. Oh, Aww. thank you. This podcast has helped me navigate so much of the anxiety, doubts, and discomfort I have had post-college and this first year of med- medical school. Oh, amazing. Oh, Congratulations. Wow. Um, it's so nice to have what feels like two hilarious big sisters who can share their wisdom and aren't afraid to be vulnerable. Love every episode. Thank you. Wow. Man. 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 I needed that today. Six. That felt like such a nice hug through the through the podcast. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for taking the time to re- to, to write that. And God, it just means so much like that this podcast can be of support or helpful in any way. Like that just... Yeah, it just is the cherry on top because it's just so enjoyable, and then that it's also like it's helping people is just uh, man, it means, it's huge. It means a lot. It really yeah. does. Thank um, you, thank you, <laughs> and good luck with medical school. That's a big feat. Yes, <laughs> badass move. Yeah. All um, right, everyone. All right, guys, we hope that you are having a wonderful time around the holidays. Um, Again, in January, I will be in Orlando and San Diego. So many more coming up. So KelseyCook.com for tour date tickets. And uh, yeah, Career Crush podcast. Yeah, Career Crush at DelaneyFisher.com. And if you want to leave an iTunes review, feel free to leave one because it's probably going to get read on the very next episode. We're like pretty much caught up. So we'd love to to read it. Thank you all. All right, guys, we love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Maybe I'm self-help. Thank you for tuning in to the Self Helpless Podcast. You can find our Patreon community, merch, and our individual work at selfhelplesspodcast.com. We'd be thrilled if you shared this episode with a friend, left an iTunes review, or feel free to post it on your Instagram and tag at selfhelplesspodcast. Thanks, guys.